So George, George, I've got an email from you. Okay, you asked for some help on a an issue that I that that is one that affects many, 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 many men. Okay, it has to do with premature ejaculation, meaning you get started involved sexually and you pop off uh, a lot faster than you might like, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How long has that been going on? As long as I've been ejaculating. So starting at age. Whenever thir 12, 13, 13 or whatever, whatever that, that is. is. Yep. Okay. Um, well, to begin with, that would likely be masturbation rather than having some, some uh, female partner or something like that. Correct. All right. So when, when did you have your first female partner? Uh, it was probably about 20, 25, 26. Oh, 25. You waited that long. Well, I was, you know, I had a lot of difficulties connecting with women uh, growing up. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm making a little note here. Sure. Um, because of rejection? Because of... Well, I'm, because... You know, until I was a senior in college, I couldn't even talk to a girl I was attracted to. Um, I had a lot of, um, you know, it'd be like trying to put my hand on a hot stove. Um, and I've done a lot of work on issues related to my relationship with my mother, particularly when my sister was born at age three. And I felt abandoned by my mother because my mother, it felt like to me that my mother took all of her affection, which had previously been lavished on me and just took it and put it on her. And I was, so there seemed, and I've done a lot of work on that. And that, that work, I think, has enabled me to connect with a woman who is now my wife. Okay. Uh, so, so when you say age three, you mean your age three? My age three, correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a, this is somewhat typical too, by the way, you know, mm -hmm. you're the only child I gather up until age three, you get the attention Correct. and all of that. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. I mean, I have to, I, I, I'm an only child period. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and so I got all the Christmas presents. And <laughs> my, my wife is the same. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I want to get behind that a little bit because I know you have another specific event that you we want to get to, but just sure. what we're going to be doing here, George is, is to, explore a bunch of stuff we're eventually going to bring an unseen therapist eventually okay mm -hmm. but we want to get as specific as we can as detailed as we can on what we're going to aim at with unseen therapists we want to be able to put as much on the table as we possibly can sure. that way we're not hiding stuff forgetting stuff repressing stuff don't want to look at stuff you know that kind of thing we mm -hmm. want to put as much of it out there. We're going to be reframing things probably. Uh, so when they, by the time they get on the table, they're, we looked at them a little differently than we may have before. We're more willing to let them go, this kind of thing. Sure. So this ex exploration part of it's going to be important. And we may get to things you haven't even thought of. We'll see. Okay. Sure. All right. But I want to go back now. Okay. So. Nor normally, normally, whatever normally means. Um, typically, I'll put it that <clears throat> put it that way. When I hear someone who's now got a new sister or new brother, or and they have the jealousy issue, this is not uncommon, by the way. <laughs> happens sure. happens with great regularity. Mm -hmm. um, I don't hear that manifesting as some form of sexual dysfunction. I don't hear that. Uh, can you tell me what, what link there might be with that? Um, I mean, my own speculation on that point has been that, you know, if you have too great a sexual experience and too great of a connection, it feels like there's too great a risk of abandonment. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. In, in fact, you know, the sexual act typically is called at least in america making mm -hmm. love okay. sure so so 
So you get into it and whoa, you know, the bells and the whistles go off and well, this is really good. I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Despite anything else you may have done or whatever, but that I love you. I love you. We're going to go for, we're, we're going to go round two and four and 12 and whatever on that one. Okay. So am I, am, I, I I'm hearing that right. I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying that right. It's the, it's the orgasmic. Wow. It says if that gets too big and they leave, ooh, the abandonment thud is too big. Did I say it right? That's my speculation, yes. Okay. Now, but at age three, you're you're not having any kind of ejaculation. Um, no. And I guess also behind my question is why would that if if you can tell me? Mm-hmm. Why would that translate to you not you having difficulty time even talking to women up until age 25 or something? Uh, you know, women, women were pretty scary for me. Uh, you know, there's a series of events that I have that I have worked on. Uh, one at age 11 uh, was my first approaching. Uh, a girl that I was, well, not the very first instance, but I was probably the first major instance of me approaching a girl who I was attracted to. Uh, there was a, there was a, going to be a school dance in sixth grade. Uh, I called her up and I um, asked her if she wanted to go to the dance with me. And, um, and she said she wouldn't go with me, but she would see me there. And so the next day in school, though, uh, kind of all hell broke loose because word got around, obviously, that I had asked her to dance. And I was kind of the first boy to take that kind of a step uh, among my classmates, apparently. Uh -huh. um, there is a, uh, an instance where uh, we were going to, I had a class on the second floor of the school building after lunch. And when I got to the top of the staircase, I was greeted by a group of boys who picked me up and carried me up on their shoulders into the classroom. And I really hated that. It was, I did not like that kind of, uh, but they were treating me like a hero. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you that. Okay. You like, know, they were, yeah. 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 They okay. were, they were treating me like a hero and I got into the classroom and in particular, there was a girl who was sitting next to me who, looking back now, apparently was jealous, but she was really cutting into me pretty good. And uh, long story short, the girl who I called on the phone yeah. to ask the dance, I was never able to talk to her again. I didn't go to the dance. And I didn't go to the dance. Because she didn't want to talk to you? She was... Rejecting I couldn't. You? I couldn't bring myself to talk oh, you to her. I was so traumatized by this whole event. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to get in, into that some. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see how that traumatization. I I see how how why girls might be scary and why mm -hmm. you may may not want to ask some other girl out because all of this happened and it's a big, yeah. the word I keep hearing internally is it's a big rejection for you, even though you're a hero, it's still a it's rejection. A, it's a rejection, but also that level of publicity to me was scary. I was, I'm, um, I'm a very shy person. Um, I always have been a very shy person. My personal view, but maybe you're getting something different is that the, the public nature of that event was also traumatizing for me. And uh, there was also a previous instance where um, when I was maybe age seven or eight, where a girl in the neighborhood had shared that I had this, uh, she inadvertently shared with the kids in the neighborhood that I had a bedwetting problem because she knew because her parents knew because my parents had talked to them. They had a son who also had a problem and they had gotten this device for him to resolve that problem. And so my mother asked, 
their mother if we could borrow that device and maybe that would help me overcome my bedwetting problem. And it did, uh, but apparently my friend down the street, Laura, knew about it and uh, blurted it. And so, and I felt very ashamed about that. So there's this element too, I think, that connects the two dots of these two events of sharing information publicly that I didn't really want to have shared. Well, there's another phrase coming up to me. Let me just pass it by you. It doesn't make me right, just for okay. exploring. Yep. And that is you have an aversion to having the spotlight on you. Absolutely. Spotlight on you is a good phrase? I think that's pretty good. Um, okay. I mean, pr particularly in that age. Now, after having given uh, lots and lots of presentations in my professional career, um, maybe it's a little bit different now, but certainly at that age, I was, yeah, definitely not well, keen on having the spotlight. Okay, but even at this age, you're having premature ejaculation issues, and the connection I am maybe seeing, that's why we have to explore this, and you have to tell me whether I'm on target or not. Mm -hmm. is that when you're, you're engaged sexually, you are internally required to perform properly. The spotlight is on you, maybe not publicly, but at least at the moment, the spotlight is, does that fit? I don't know whether that fits. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I have been speculating more recently as this event at age kind of 13 has, you know, come back up in my memory is maybe I don't deserve to have that level of sexual pleasure because of this event. How does not, des which event are you speaking of now? Uh, there's one that I haven't shared with you that I have this guilt and oh. shame about. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, we'll get to that, but I still want to explore where we were just so I'm, okay. I'm complete on it. Mm -hmm. um, somehow or other, I, I keep getting this notion, the spotlight on you has, or something like that has something to do with your premature ejaculation. Something about... I. I need to perform. I need to be okay. I, I uh, and I'm not doing it, and I'm I'm being punished for something, maybe or something. Yeah, like that. that I mean that that could be. Okay, uh, or, or I'm the, not rule it out. Or the abandonment issue. If I don't perform, I'm going. If this is too big, if this is too big and too wonderful, and I do it right, I may get abandoned. I may get left because of it. That resonates for me a little bit more. Okay. Right. And, and perhaps it's worth sharing that, you know, my mother as a preteen and early teen was sexually abused uh, repeatedly by somebody who was, I'll just say close to her. And, right. and she would also felt abandoned by her father. Her father left their family, uh, as I understand it, for another woman. And so, you know, my mother's, you know, my mother's feelings around sexuality and men are very muddled, to say the least. And so and how I think some of that, I think some of that. Okay. You know, I think I, right, I took some of that on. All right, good good input. How do you know your mother was sexually abused? She sat down and told, told you one day? She, or, or? she did uh, She did tell us, yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us, you and your sister? My, you, me and my sister, yes. Okay. And how old were you when you were told that? Um, I was probably 29. 29? Yeah. Okay. So you had, by that time, you had already had premature ejaculation issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Make a little note here. All right. So what was the what what is the issue that you have the shame about, et cetera? What I think the, you told the me event? Was, Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I used to do some babysitting to make some money. Uh, you know, when I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old in the neighborhood. And goodness, I've never shared this with anybody else before. So this is really kind of a little scary to share. So, so uh, I was babysitting some kids in the neighborhood, a boy and a girl. And at one point, you know, they had both gone to bed. And so I, uh, after they had been in bed for a little while, went around to check on them. And I went in the girls, up to the girls' room. The door was open. The light was on. She was lying in bed. Um, she was not under the covers. She had a nightgown on. Uh, the nightgown was lifted up above her genitals, and she was not wearing any underwear. All right. And not having seen a woman's genitals... I kind of went over there and took a close look and, and I touched her. And okay. I shouldn't have touched her. Well, you, you touched her genitals? Yes. Very gently on the outside. Any penetration or anything like that? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I gather you have a big time guilt about that, even as you say it. That's correct. Like a 10? Yes. Is there any physical sensations going on in your body when you're saying like you're sweating? I can just, or... feel, I can just feel my blood pumping through my, you know. Okay, let me, let me make a little note here. Da, 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 da. Okay. So let's get to that for the moment. And let's mm -hmm. get to the... And so, so you're 12, 13 years old, you're, be, you're beginning to have sexual development yourself. Sure. A sex drive yourself. Right. Okay. You're, you're motivated to masturbate yet, do you know? Oh, I was masturbating at probably age six. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so this was, that part of it was old stuff to you. Okay. Correct. So there you are, a young boy, 12, 12 or 13, you said? Okay. 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah. Tw 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. You do this big no-no. Right. Now. So what I want to explore with you is the guilt involved, but not so much guilt per se. But we want to. What, what I want to. What I want to get to. If you've ever, you may not have ever even thought about this. Okay, I want to get to. It. What does that activity mean to you about you? I'm a bad person. I'm terrible. I'm. I'm. I deserve punishment forever. Uh, God won't love me because I'm so damaged. Uh, what? That's a hard question to answer because this event hasn't has only recently come back into my consciousness. So it's not something that I've been like consciously living with for years, All right. like be, being on, you know, but I, I do feel like, you know, it, at 13 or 12 or however old I was, I feel like I, I was old enough to have known better and I probably did know better, you know? Well, all right. So you knew, you knew better. Now, on the other hand, I'm not saying we're not excusing behavior in all of this. Sure. We're, the really important thing here is we understand the behavior because the ultimate, the ultimate part on this particular instance mm -hmm. is going to be for, forgiveness and we all have to deal with forgiveness whether it's our own actions or somebody else that did something to us or whatever forgiveness mm -hmm. there's freedom in forgiveness we so long as we carry around the lack of forgiveness 
Right. We're in, we're in jail. Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. A jail of our own making, a prison of our own making. Okay. Yep. So there you are. Now, in, in one sense, um, this girl maybe didn't even know about it. That's what I'm guessing. Okay. And if she did, I'm not hearing any foul from her point of view. I'm not hearing she's feeling violated. She's, she's screwed up for the rest of her life because of some early sexual assault. I have no idea. You know, I haven't, I haven't seen them in decades, so I have no idea. Okay. Well, it's highly unlikely, given what you're saying, that she's going to, I mean, she even knew about it. How old was she? she? How old was she? I don't know. She might have been six or seven. All right. That to me, that to me, I mean, you, you could take that on. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yes. On the right. other hand, on the other hand, there you are, 12 or 13 years old, big time curious. Yes. I mean, I would be big time curious. I didn't have that experience. Let me give you, oh, let me, I will give you an example. As a matter of fact, I'm remembering mm -hmm. this. This is a personal example. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was about, how old was I? Eight or nine, maybe something like that. And, and I, I, I lived in a house. My parents rented a house that was behind another house. And anyway, there was a pathway walking out to the street. And as I walked along this pathway, there was a house to my right. And in that house lived two girls, Darlene and Marilyn. I remember their names well. Okay. They were about my age. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down this path and I, I noticed standing in front of this window in full display on purpose was Marilyn without any clothes on. Mm -hmm. She was standing there knowing I'm going to, I'm probably going to stop and stare. And indeed I stopped and stared mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and, and she was fine with it. And I stopped, and I stared and I stared and I stared. I just, I, I don't even remember how long I sat there, but I was so curious. I was so curious. That's what a girl looks like. Yeah. And she's letting me look. Oh, here we go. Open door. Yay. 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 You know, remember that. I remember it vividly, vividly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I didn't have any chance to touch, but if she had said, you know, come in and touch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Or at, right. least I, at least I think that's what, what I would have, I don't know, eight or nine or whatever it was years old. Sure. But I was very curious and that was well before I, I reached puberty and, you know, had more mature sex drive showing up and all of that. Okay. Right. Right. But may I draw a few distinctions between yeah. your event and my event? Yeah, please, please. That's what we're asking for. Yeah. So first of all, I was entrusted with the care of this girl. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, she didn't have the opportunity to consent or not. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of there's a couple of yeah. differences. Yeah. I I actually touched in the whole Me Too era that we're in. It feels very scary to admit that. Okay. All right. You know. And that and thank you because that's the important part of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we both have curiosity. And in one sense, I'm trying to reframe all of this for you. So it isn't that big a deal. Okay? I, I understand. And I've definitely thought of the curiosity angle myself. I mean, yeah. it definitely, I think that is what drove the action. I don't, I don't think much of, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure about the touching. Some would, some wouldn't. I, I don't, I can't speak for every young boy at 12 or 13. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can only tell you, I can remember having conversations with, guy friends of mine at age 12 13 14 who were also developing sexually and you know they would you know there's a lot of locker room talk going on there's a no, more than curiosity let me tell you okay understood <laughs> and the girls do the same thing they just won't tell you about it <laughs> okay yeah. so there's this big shame issue going on and you, you, you you're so curious and mother nature is driving you in this direction by the way sure okay 
I mean, if there wasn't curiosity about it, we wouldn't have babies. <laughs> okay. Curiosity, sure. interest, whatever you want to call it, or, or derive in that direction. Yep. Okay, but, but still, I, still, this is all good because what we want to get down to is what that says to you about you and you feel, you didn't really say this yet, but this is part of I don't deserve. Something's I, bad with me. I Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you I think I think that I think the I don't deserve is a big element to that if I were to speculate. All right. Now, does that plug into some kind of a um, a religious item? Ooh, thou shalt not or God won't love you or something like that. Yeah, um I would say not presently, but perhaps in younger years that might have been a factor okay where does the i don't who says you don't deserve because you acted on a sexual curiosity i guess i say that well you say that but chances are there's an echo somebody uh, else is some uh, my mother if she knew my mother would say you know or potentially say say what that i don't deserve to have what I want sexually. And that's because you think of her own sexual abuse or her own religious training, her own cultural? Yeah. What? All, all of the above, but I think particularly her abuse. Well, you don't even know about her abuse at this age. Uh, understood. But, but at this age, right, I just kind of, you know, like I said, I haven't been living, I haven't been living with the guilt of this for, 50, you know, however, 40 years uh, since it, since it happened. Uh, it's, it's only been something that recently came back into my consciousness. Okay. We're still exploring. We're still exploring. Yep. I'm getting pieces yep. together. This, yep. is gonna, this is going to be useful when we finally bring in unseen therapist here. Yep. Let me fast forward for the moment. Okay. Here you are in current time. Mm -hmm. you're having sexual relationships with your wife. Now you were telling me before we recorded that you've made great progress here, but what you have mm -hmm. to do is once you're in the, in the act, you got to slow down or, you know, you're going to be too soon and that's going to get in the way of her pleasure too soon. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. You would rather stick around a little bit longer because mm -hmm. that's for your pleasure as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you're, but so, so you, what you've, you're able to do this if I understand it right, but you've got to stop, take deep breaths, think of other things or whatever you do. Sure. Um, to stop the uh, volcano from going off. How's that? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Now, as best you can and if you can. Right? Mm -hmm. When you're, when you're having such relations with your wife, you're getting it on, so to speak. And mm -hmm. here comes the premature, oh, oh, here it comes kind of thing. Yeah. What goes on in your mind, if you can tell me, other than, oh, let me stop and take a deep breath. Oh, no, not again is the first thing, right? Okay, all right. Uh. And there's an, I'm not good enough, right? Well, tell me some more about that. How, how does, I'm not good enough because I prematurely ejaculate? Right. Right. If I were good enough, I wouldn't have to, you know, stop, take deep breaths, do whatever else. Do I, do I gather that you're not good enough in large part because of your mother's influence? She's the one telling you, maybe in those words, maybe not, but with her gestures, behavior, et cetera, you're not good enough? I, yeah, I mean, I certainly feel like that. Certainly felt like that in my childhood, right? Um, when and you're, I, and you're, and well, see, if, okay, I'm trying to put some things together here, okay? So, sure. Always sure. help me. Mm -hmm. So if you ask this girl to the prom, 
mm-hmm. and she rejects you in this fashion. Right. That's a, that is in one sense saying you're not good enough. I mean, right. that, that is the conclusion one could make. Sure. When you are then on the shoulders of your fellows being a hero, the spotlight mm-hmm. is on you. You don't right. deserve that. That's not good enough. Put me down. Let me go hide someplace. I don't know. I don't deserve it, but I certainly don't like it. Okay. I really didn't like that at all. Uh, and I feel quite confident that I don't deserve this did not go through my head in that moment. It was like, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> you know, just let right. me do my, th- you know. All right. Don't give me all this attention. I don't want all this attention. A lot of people, George. Mm-hmm. Want that attention. I get want, that. They want attention big time. Uh, yeah, yeah, love me, love me, love me, applaud, applaud, you know, uh, give me compliments, uh, whatever, okay? Right. If you got the attention, what would be the penalty for that? Hmm. So what's coming up for me is I would have to uh, keep producing, right? You know, I would have, I would be continuously under a microscope and I would have to keep, you know, meeting their expectations. Otherwise they're going to reject me. Okay. You got to keep performing. Yes. You were, you were Elvis once and now you have to be Elvis forever, right? That that's what's coming up for me. I've never really thought about it. I mean, it took took me some time to kind of process that question. Does any of that? I, I'm asking you a question. I know you've never even thought about before. Okay, so, mm-hmm. but when you're having sexual relations with sip of your wife, does any of that? I've ooh, if I perform once, well, I got to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. I don't know. I mean, it feels like um, feels like do it once. That's great. <laughs> you know, it's okay. like uh, all right, all right, all right. You know, all right. Um, well, okay. Let me let me go back again in time. Okay. With mother, uh, I didn't hear. I don't remember much about father. Did you talk about father much? No, you and I haven't spoken much about my father uh, in this session. Is he a player in in that at all? In all of this? Well, uh, it's. I guess the one thing that I'll say about my father in this regard is he obviously had a lot of uh, shame attached to the sexuality topic because when it was time for him to sit down and talk to me about it. he basically didn't talk to me about it. He basically just said, you know, there's the encyclopedia over there and all the, all that you need to know is you can find there. Yeah. Okay. Or, 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 or a girly mag, take your choice. <laughs> uh, well, no. Okay. That's great that you say that. All right. That's great that you say that because, um, there was an instance where um, I had happened upon my mother's Fredwick's of Hollywood catalog and I brought it to my father and I was like, look at this, this is great. This is, and he's like, what are you doing with that? <laughs> you know? <you're> yeah. Not... <laughs> okay. And his, his reaction shocked me. Right. 
I was expecting to be like, oh, you know, this is great, you know. Well, I'm I'm hearing now between your mother and your father, mm -hmm. there is an influence on you about sex. That's not that's not a good thing. It's Absolutely. a no no. Absolutely. Bad, bad people do that. Bad people enjoy that. I, you didn't say that, but sure. Are are we on target? Yeah, I think so. If you do that, something is bad. If you do that, you won't deserve something else because you do that. And if you touch that that young girl you babysat with, whoa, mm -hmm. yeah, is that ever bad? Yep. Yep. Now that feels like like we're close to the bullseye. All right. And well, can I throw can I throw one more event on the table? Please. So among my other you know, we shared that uh, I had a bedwetting problem as a kid. I also had a constipation problem as a kid. And um, there was an instance where my parents brought me to see a doctor uh, about this. And the doctor uh, digitally went inside uh, to see if there was some kind of a blockage. Um, and... I didn't know that this was going to happen. I, you know, I was quite shocked by what happened. And, you know, I wasn't very different from a digital prostate exam that you get today from a yeah. doctor at, yeah. at, at my age or at your age. Um, but, um, but at the time it was quite shocking and there was kind of this element of, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I think, towards my parents, I was like, you brought me to, you, what did you bring me to? And you know, where, where, where did that come from? You didn't tell me this was going to, you, you told me we were going to the doctor and he was going to check some things, but you didn't say that was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, were you relating that to sexual issues at all or not? Just, I'm just throwing that out okay. there as potentially related to sexual issues as well. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. All right. All right. You say you've done a lot of work on this yourself and you've improved, et cetera, and you have mechanical ways of, of stopping the premature ejaculation with your wife and so on. But sure. the, when you say you've done other work on it, you've done work with unseen therapists, with EFT, I've, with something else? What? I've done work with EFT on it. I mean, I've, I was first exposed to EFT back in the summer of 2002. Um, right. And that's um, 19 years ago. But I've also done a lot of work with a woman I've been working with in New York since 2006. And she doesn't do EFT. She does something that's called NET, neuroemotional technique. Yeah. But it also involves uh, tapping and muscle testing. And I'm, she's extremely, she's very effective. And I'm very happy with the results that I've gotten with her over the years. I do not think that I would be in my relationship with my wife without her all right so. good good and when you were doing that were you doing work regarding your mother or regarding the the symptom itself so um in 2008 i was finally in my second relationship and the woman unexpectedly broke off the relationship suddenly and that brought up all this stuff about my mother at age three uh, when my sister was born and feelings of abandonment. And that was my first exposure to uh, that as a potential source of some of my uh, sexuality and uh, issues around relationships with women. Okay. So I've done a lot of work around that, um, that particular set of events even though i can't you know i don't have conscious memory of like my sister being brought home or you know any of that kind of stuff well we are likely to go over things perhaps you did with net and sure and so on we're going to be doing it with unseen therapists mm -hmm. and we may be doing it uh, from different angles than you've done before because even though there's great progress, you're not done yet. 
you're never done, right? But well, in this area in particular, no, yeah. I'm definitely not where I want to be. So, okay, all right. Now let me go back one more time. Just I want to be clear about something. The idea that if you really got over this problem and your volcano would go off on time <laughs> and all his bells and whistles and you get the great big wow and whoa, here it is, that it would be, you would be then pulled into a fear of that is so good. What happens if I get, if she leaves and I get abandoned, that's going to sting real bad. Where does that, after all this conversation, play in your own mind as a candidate? Uh, that's a that's a highly likely candidate, I think. Okay. Uh -huh. Going back to your mother. Uh -huh. If you had told your mother about this babysitting incident, uh -huh. what would her response have been? Do you would you guess? I think she would have been very angry with me. Your father. Hard to say, uh, but I think he probably would have been. If I judge by just if I if I judge by his reaction to me showing him the Fredericks Fredericks the Hollywood uh, catalog, I would say he probably would have reacted upset as well. Okay. Would I be correct in assuming that one of your mother's greatest needs would be love? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If, if she had been raised in a very loving place, felt love herself, mm -hmm. you have to speculate for me, if you would, okay? Right. But if she was really filled with, with love and not having all this internal unrest and so on, mm -hmm. um, would you have your premature ejaculation problem? That's a, that's a that's a tough leap i know i just want your reaction to it my react my gut reaction is no you wouldn't have it mike that's my gut reaction okay you don't know that but that's that's if you ask me spontaneously what comes up the the answer i come up with there is no okay to restate that if she was full, filled with love mm -hmm. um you would be you would be performing normally sexually correct yes that's okay. that's speculation spec but yeah it's a speculation <laughs> yeah okay, okay. But we want it okay all right now i'm having a hard time for the moment i want to get to unseen therapist here soon okay yep i'm i'm having a difficult time at the moment putting something together so we need to have you stitch something together for me if you will your sister was born when you're age three, and you felt abandoned. Yes. Got it. Um, I'm not seeing how that abandonment feeling, I, 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 I see it in the sense that if, I'm not seeing how that connects to, to the premature ejaculation. I'm seeing it in the sense that Ah, if you perform perfectly and wow, you might get left and feel this abandonment again. I, I, I see that link. Is that the, is that the link or, or do you see something else? You know, I don't know whether that's the link or whether it's an accumulation of kind of all of these elements, like I don't deserve it and I'm going to be abandoned and uh, it's, it's bad, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's bring in unseen therapists. Okay. What we have here is lots of little pieces and all of that. Typically I like to bring her in and we start with a specific event. And I think what I'm going to do is start with the birth of your sister. Mm -hmm. 
and then launch from there. But we need, a, we need to do something prior to that. Close your eyes, if you would, George. Mm -hmm. And um, go back to that time when you first felt, wow, I've, I'm jealous here. I'm abandoned. You know, something was said, something was done. You saw something. You got, all of a sudden got this, uh-oh, I'm not the center of attention anymore. Uh-oh, I don't get the level. Uh-oh, something. Can you locate that? Yeah. All right. On a scale of zero to 10, how intense do you feel about that now as you, as you access it? Three is what I'm getting. Okay, open your eyes. Three is, three is what you're getting. Is that like you see the number three or you're feeling something or what? Yeah, I don't feel very much at all. And I just kind of saw a number three. You don't feel very much at all. Yeah. I didn't make a note of it, but somewhere earlier, we, I asked you on a scale of zero to 10 about something and you, you said it was pretty high. I forgot what it was. Do you remember? That's the, that's the event at age 13. That's oh, the babysitter. oh, yeah. Okay. So you feel that one. Oh, yeah. That's a 10? Yeah. Okay. I get the three. I get the, th what you're seeing is a three bigger than that. That's just okay. my take on it. Okay. Yeah. And I think I, I, you know, I, a lot of that early childhood stuff for me is so vague because I mean, I have to, I have to make up the scenes because I don't remember them. Yeah. Okay. And so that's one, that's one issue. And, um, and so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to conjure up feelings about a made up event. All right. Okay. You know? Okay. Thank you. I'm going to shift instead of launching off of the age three thing, mm -hmm. even though it might be more foundational, I, I may bring it in as well, but sure. it's, it's more the age 12 or 13 babysitting. Mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I don't really know where we're going to go with this. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's going to be easy for you because all you have to do is just follow along. Okay. <laughs> but let me, let me interject this, George. Um, as we go through this, this is really going to be a joint effort. It isn't just unseen therapist and me doing something for you. It's helpful if you participate, meaning, Meaning, as we're going through all of this, well, yeah, it's easy to, but if something comes up that needs to be interjected, I'm just now remembering or something like that, or that which you said really spiked me in some fashion or whatever, whatever may happen, let us know. Let us know. We're doing this together. Yep. I'm not doing it to you, for you, et cetera. We're doing it with unseen therapists together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love is best when shared. Okay. That's what we're doing. All right. So with that in mind and not really knowing where we're going to go until unseen therapist sort of just shows me something or other. <laughs> we have, a, I have a few notes and we'll take off and see what happens. Okay. Great. So close the eyes, close the eyes, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just recall a loving moment in your own life. It's a way of inviting unseen therapists. It's whenever you recalled that moment, just nod your head. All right, good. That's just a way of saying to unseen therapists, hey, we're listening. We're, we're not usually listening. Our ego is talking too much. Okay. But we're going to give you a little something to work on. And we're listening. We're paying attention. That's all that is. So let's go back. There you are, age 12 or 13. You are babysitting. You are curious sexually, as any young boy would be, or for that matter, young girl, about the opposite sex. And there you are, you walk into the room to look after the children that you're they're sleeping and you're babysitting. And there's the girl, young girl. 
and her genitalia is exposed. You see it. Oh, curious, curious, curious. Let me ask you, as we're doing this together, George, would you fault any other boy for being curious under these circumstances? Just for being no. curious? No. Okay. All right. A natural kind of thing? Sure. Would you fault them for staring? <laughs> no. Okay. Now you went, you went, you were so curious, you touched her. And you understand the drive that would have you touch her and so on, but there's not, not some guilt and some shame about that. Would you, for this other boy, same age, same circumstances, if he was also motivated to touch her, would you give him shame and guilt for that? I think I might, yeah. Oh, you might, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because he invaded her privacy, because he did something against God, because what? Without her consent. Without her consent. Okay. All right. All right. Well, unseen therapist is here. She's looking at this. She sees it through different glasses than you do. She's more mature than you are, certainly at that age, for sure. Okay. She recognizes the curiosity. Every boy and every girl has it. Okay. It comes with the package. And she sees that you touch. Well, maybe you shouldn't touch me. She didn't that you didn't have her consent and so on. But she also sees what you're doing to yourself with that. You somehow had a moment of weakness. Is that a fair statement for that? For that? For yes. You? Okay. Yes. A moment of weakness. And you acted on it. She sees that. She sees like, like you, in the rest of your life, you've had other moments of weakness, whether they were sexual or not. Have you not? Correct. Okay. Does everybody have moments of weakness? Absolutely. Okay. I don't, I don't want to impose things on you, but are moments of weakness considered normal? Yes, absolutely. Right. You're having your moment of weakness, a moment of weakness, correct? Yes. All right. Normal in that sense. Now, I, I know I'm twisting words a little bit, but, but uh, true, not true. Give me your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So you're having an unseen therapist sees it differently than you do. This is a moment of weakness. You're saying, uh oh, no consent for her. Something's wrong with me. I, I don't deserve anything for the rest of my life. You didn't really say that, but how, is, is that landing? That lands, yeah. Okay. And well, she sees it differently. But you don't, what you don't know is at that moment is that there are a bazillion. 12 or 13 year old boys who were having moments of weakness of some kind or other, sexually speaking. All right. Some, by the way, and you were telling me, I forgot when you told me this whether before the recording or afterwards, that masturbation was occurring even starting at age six. There are sure. some who would say, Masturbate? Oh, shame on you. You're going to hell. Don't touch yourself. Are you aware of some people have that view? Sure. I mean, my mother, you know, caught me once or twice, like, stop that. Yeah. Okay. Somehow or other, if I get it right, you don't have the, I don't deserve shame on me reaction about that. Do you or not? No. Okay. Touch yourself. Fine. Touch somebody else. Not fine. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So here's unseen therapist. She's seeing it. Moment of weakness. Yes. Now what we want to do is, is represent. And this is something we, I, I do in my book and you've probably read about this and the 
and so on. So we'll do a very standard thing on this to begin with. Mm-hmm. So there you are. And we're going to represent this feeling of guilt and shame over this moment of weakness. And we're going to represent it as an unwanted, metaphorically, as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 like that. Mm-hmm. We're not actually asking you to have a vibration around your heart. We're just, this is all imaginary. Okay. An unseen therapist sees this representation. Right? She sees this metaphor. And so in your imagination, you allow her then to send a gentle, cooling, healing, understanding breeze towards you. It comes towards you, it enters your body, it surrounds your heart. Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. But it's a moment of weakness. It is something, well, let me ask you, have you ever repeated it? No. Okay. It's something you did once, but you're still carrying it around decades later. Am I correct? Yes. Big time. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Unseen therapist says, well, come on, George. You had a moment of weakness once. You're going to let it still bother you and do all this to you, you know, decades later. What's your response to her when she says that to you? Well, what's coming up for me is that, you know, um, in society, you know, pedophile activity from decades ago is being, you know, penalized today. If you look at the Catholic church stuff or any of that other kind of stuff that's going on in society with the with the me too movement is your religious background catholic no christian uh, episcopal okay all right. all right let me ask you this says unseen therapist in your opinion george is this activity of touching the young girl, moment of weakness, forgivable? Yes. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to to forgive it, to is saying is saying is saying and meaning it was a moment of weakness. Does that open the door to forgiveness? I think it does. Okay. All right. Well, unseen, see, and let me describe something else to you, George. Um, the, how was I going to say that? The forgiveness is a, is a very lofty word. Most of us aren't capable of in this separated illusionary human experience capable of true forgiveness where we actually realize this is all a dream and it never really happened to begin with. We can maybe academically discuss it, but are we able to do that here? But a step in that direction is understanding it. If we can understand the behavior, that is a solid step towards forgiveness, would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So what Unseen Therapist is doing is recognizing maybe we can't have complete, true forgiveness, but we can have freedom simply by understanding this is a moment of weakness. And George does not need to keep carrying this on throughout his entire life. So unseen therapist senses cooling, healing, loving, understanding breeze to the unwanted vibration around your heart. And I go ta 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 ta, but I'm going to put some other words around it. I touched her. I touched her. I touched her. 
I touched her, I touched her, I touched her, okay? And as that breeze comes along and surrounds the heart, the, I touched her, can't really survive in all of that, a moment of weakness. That's all it was. A 12 or 13 year old boy's moment of curiosity, weakness is all that is, George. And so the unwanted vibration around the heart since it cannot survive with all that love and understanding, goes, I touched her, 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 I touched her. Now let's go back. Let's do that again. And let's, I'm going to add something else into this here. There is a sense somewhere in this that there's something wrong with me and it comes from my mother and my father, especially around sexual things. Oh, don't touch yourself. Oh, don't look at that magazine. Oh, don't do these things that come naturally to every boy and girl for that matter. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. That is an echo from their from their backgrounds. But let me ask you, George, is that you're nodding your head? I can see that. Uh -huh. But that's that's their view. They're, they're giving it to you. Are, are we correct? Yes. And you're buying it. Yeah, I definitely bought it. Okay. As a kid. And you're 12 or 13 and you're, you've been buying it, you know, for as long as you can remember. Yep. Okay. You bought it, you bought it, you bought it, you bought your parents' views on things, and you had no input whatsoever on where they got those views. Am I correct in that? Correct. You just simply bought their views. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you today, this is a reframing question. <laughs> no, <Okay>. absolutely not. <laughs> well, I'm going to say it a little bit differently, but would you Um, take the advice, would you walk into any room, any place with other people you don't know, and they start giving you advice that comes from their own background and their own training and their own experiences and so on, start giving you all this advice and you buy it? Not automatically. I you know, try to be open to whatever they're saying and consider whether it makes sense to me. Well, okay. Somebody says, any, hold on a minute, I got this. Okay, interrupted by the phone, but. Sure. So somebody says, look, if you at age 12 or 13 were curious and you touch some girl, you should burn in hell. Would you buy it? No. All right. Okay. So let's go back over this again. So we, we've got this influence in all of this. I touched her, I touched her, I touched her from sources that are questionable at best. Did I say that right? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we are again. I touched her, I touched her, I touched her, I touched her. Vibrating heart. Here comes the breeze. I touched her, I touched her, I touched her, I touched her. I Touched her, touched her. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry for the exclamation. <laughs> okay, but now in your own mind, George, take your time and repeat that again. I touched her, I touched her, I touched her. Unseen the, the breeze and all of that. Do it a time or two or three or whatever fits for you, until you've gone as far as you can go. And. Um, Whenever you think you've gone as far as you can go, just open your eyes and, and we'll talk. There's, by the way, there's no grade for this. You don't get an A or a C or anything for how well you do. There, it's only what happens that counts, okay? So go ahead. Okay.
Okay, why don't we see where we are here? Yeah. Okay, well, I noticed what you, as you were doing that, mm -hmm. at the very first of it, you were smiling. At least you appeared to smile. Okay. Was was I see? Were you smiling or or? I don't I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, I, I, I tell me. Uh, first of all, were you able to do that? Uh, follow along well, or did you have a bunch of competing thoughts? Uh, no, I was able to follow along well. Um, I guess the one thing that really stood out to me is normally when I do that, ex the that exercise with the unseen therapist uh, using your video on YouTube, um, I sense the cool breeze coming from my left. And in this instance, just now, it was coming from up top, kind of down through my head. Okay. That was new and different for me. Do you see a significance to that? I don't, I don't know. I'm just describing okay. what happened. All right. All right. All right. Um, I, I did, as I was talking about, you know, you doing things like, like going, get, taking the advice of somebody at a party about whether or not a 12 or 13 year old should, should feel guilty about touching their genitalia or touching, touching somebody and your, mm -hmm. your parents' responses. And I was, I was seeing some smiles and laughter at that point. Sure. And so I, I was perceiving, but you have to tell me. Mm -hmm. The reframes were landing. Yes. Okay. I think th I think they were. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. This is something I probably should have tested to be. To be I'm going to do some testing. Okay. But this is something okay. I probably I probably should have tested earlier and didn't. Mm -hmm. So we're okay. going to have an after in this test and no before. <laughs> so let's see what, see what. But I think the before would have been a, a ten. That's my guess. But. If, if I had asked you before we ever did any of this to say, have you say a sentence, the sentence being, God, I'm a damaged pedophile forever. If I were to have you say that sentence before we begin, my guess is on a scale of zero to 10, that would have been something high on the, on the truth level. Like that would have been an eight or nine or 10 or something. I don't know that I would have gone that far. Um, I would have said four or five. Okay. Well, save the sentence now. God, I'm a, I'm a damaged pedophile forever. And tell me, how true does it feel? Not the logic, not the logic. How true does it feel to you? I'm a damaged pedophile forever. No, that's, that's kind of like a zero or a one. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now another, another test. Sure. Close your eyes for me. Mm -hmm. Go back to this babysitting event. Yep. And there you are. You touch her and you get this, oh, God, what's, whatever your emotional feeling is at that point. The, the 10 or thereabouts you had to begin with. Is it still a 10, something else? What happens? When I visualize the event, it's, you know, kind of in the zero one range. But when I think about, could I tell somebody about this event other than say you, could I tell a woman about this event? Then I kind of get up to a three or four. Does your wife know about the event? No, no, you're the first person I've ever told. Okay. So tell me on a scale of zero to 10, what is your hesitancy to tell your wife five all right let me ask you this if you were able to tell it to her mm -hmm. freely mm -hmm. would that would that be indicative of freedom on this issue for me yeah i i, I feel that way yeah okay mm -hmm. well you know, now, one thing we don't know, mm -hmm. George, one thing we don't know is whether or not what we've just done 
is going to materially affect the premature ejaculation thing. We don't know. Okay. Sure. There are other pieces likely and so on and so forth. It's a start, it's a contributor, it's, it's a kind of like a good start session. Uh, mm -hmm. But to have freedom uh, on that event, whether mm -hmm. or not it uh, impacts yet the premature ejaculation is valuable in and of itself to have freedom on that event. Sure, absolutely. Okay. And one more test for that. I'm always testing, as you know. <laughs> always testing, always testing. Is for you to be able to freely tell your wife. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you, you say, you estimate a five hesitancy. Right. Um, what do you think would be the penalty if you told your wife? Would she leave you? Would she never respect you again? Would you, what? Yeah, I guess I wonder whether it would change how she views me or how she feels about me. I don't know. I'm going to give you a, a guess. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to giggle at it. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I don't know her. I don't yeah. know her. I don't know her. Understood. Understood. Mm -hmm. to, to me, what you did is simple, normal curiosity. It isn't even pedophilia. It's, it's, it's just to me. That's me. Okay. Sure. Right. It, it's, it's a non-event. It's just what a curious kid does. Oh, God, I should have done that. But <laughs> you know, right. That's what it feels like as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind right. of thing. Okay. A yeah. curiosity kind of thing. No harm, mm -hmm. no foul sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. like you sexually penetrated her, no. put your fingers in her, right. uh, uh, tried something, something oral with her or mm -hmm. anything like that. Sure. It was, I'm curious, you know, I and mean, that's what I'm, I'm perceiving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what it was. And I think most people would look at that and go, I, I think I'm thinking listeners to this would go, well, it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. I don't, I could be wrong. There could be somebody out there could have been sexually abused, assaulted, et cetera, and would right. be aghast at this. This is possible. This is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Others without that experience will probably go, okay. Not the best of experiences, but okay. All right. Right. That's right. my guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as you know, uh, uh, did your wife have any sexual abuse in her past? No. Okay. She has some abandonment from, you know, some relationships that she's had, but no sexual abuse yeah okay all right well my apologies to anybody who may have had sexual abuse and, and, and going like this with it okay um but people have different responses based on their backgrounds and understood and so on um let's do one more round okay with unseen therapists mm -hmm. regarding the hesitancy to tell your wife okay but let's let's talk about this first if we can mm -hmm. i want to look at your perception of the pros and the cons of doing this okay yeah what's the benefits what's the penalty mm -hmm. so let's start with the penalty first what is the what is the perceived you have to guess i guess perceived penalty if you tell her um, I guess the perceived penalty would be that it would somehow affect our relationship. Like it wouldn't be as, you know, wonderful as it is right now. So, okay. Uh, like she might, you know, just not have the same level of love and affection towards me or what have you. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. now that is potentially a big risk. Sure. I mean, it's a big risk. You yep. know, your, your marriage is your partner and, and, on you go and all of a sudden here comes this thing and she reacts in, in a certain way. Okay. Right. What's the benefit? Uh, the, to me, the benefit is, you know, the openness that we share and it, I mean, it would be, you know, considering the way we operate in our relationship, it would be entirely consistent with our relationship for me to share that with her. Uh, so, um, 
and and therefore would continue to foster the environment of openness and sharing and you know not hiding things from the other uh, that that we have. I'm thinking of something, but I, I have no idea how well this would sell to your wife. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I call it a preframe. It's a way to build up to it verbally. Yep. Something like, you know, I've had this thing that happened so long ago, and it just weighs on me and weighs on me. And I know we really want this open relationship, and I'm having hesitancy telling you about it and everything else, because I don't know how you're going to react. Mm -hmm. But I really want to honor the openness we have, and so here it is. Now, that's sort of a a build up, a preframe to it, but you've also pulled sure. into it the idea that uh, I'm open. Women love open men, by the way. Sure, I understand that. They absolutely love, men aren't very open typically. No. Nope. <laughs> However, you, you do take this risk, okay? Yeah. And so I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and advise you what to do. No, understood. But we wanna, we wanna bring unseen therapists into at least take care of any unnecessary hesitancy. Mm -hmm. All right. So yep. okay. let's just close the eyes. All right. We've already invited unseen therapists. We're not going to use this a sort of a, it's sort of a future specific event, if you will. But there you are. Where might you tell her? You would be in the living room, the car, where, where would you, where might you be? It would probably be in, um, let's just say it's in the bedroom actually okay so there you are there you are in the bedroom and um, you want to tell her there's some big benefits here big benefits here okay uh, there's some risk as well and there's some natural hesitancy some expected uh, some normal has to see some normal concern over, gee, how's she going to react? Is it really going to impact my relationship forever? Okay. I mean, that, that's there. That's a normal concern. We're going to give that a, a one or a two or something to, just to, to pull numbers up for this purpose. Okay. You're at a five. So the rest of that is we're going to call that excess, unnecessary hesitancy all right we're not going to throw away the normal concern we're going to address the unnecessary hesitancy the over-the-top hesitancy so unseen therapist says okay let's uh, george let's look at a a cloud in front of you ah oh, it's 10 feet wide 10 feet high 10 feet deep it's a dark cloud and it has a label on the front of it. It says hesitancy. And you know what that means, hesitancy for this conversation. All right. An unseen therapist says, okay, there's some darkness in this cloud. We want this cloud to be white and white is going to be, you know, just normal concern. Maybe you need to test the waters first somehow or other <laughs> before you hit her with a big one and so on. But for the moment, dark cloud representing the excess. And it's kind of a scary cloud. But unseen therapist takes you by the hand and says, well, let's just walk towards it. And as you walk towards it, you begin to feel the mist on your face of the outer edge of the cloud. It's, oh, it's kind of cooling. It's kind of nice, right? Cloud is maybe not so ominous as it might appear. And so with unseen therapists, encouragement, help and support, ah, you walk into this cloud very lovingly, very lovingly. And you see that the cloud now is gonna represent the potential, potential dark spots in this conversation. Not necessarily the dark spots of her reaction, but the dark spots of your <gasps> hesitancy. Oh, do I want to say that? 
And so you go to, there's several little dark spots in there. Maybe you're able to distinguish which one from the other, but little doubts. And you go up to one and you see it, unseen therapist looks at it and lets you look at it. And with her help, you notice this dark spot start to fade. It becomes white. It becomes normal concern, not excess hesitancy. And then, okay, you walk to the next one. Unseen therapist's help. Uh, I see excess concern here. White down to normal concern. And then just in your own mind, go to the next dark spot and the next dark spot. And just keep going until you've finished your dark spots. And... Um, so, Gary, these dark spots are not entirely disappearing. They're getting smaller, but they're not disappearing. Well, would that good deep input? Thank you. Would that would that represent them uh, 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 shrinking down to normal concern? Mm, not quite, I think. Okay, what's what's left? Can you can you can you tell me what's left? Uh, what's what's left feels like in unpredictability right all right well there is unpredictability because you don't know right what she's going to do um so what would it take do you think for that unpredictability to soften yet further I don't know. What's coming up for me was my mother's unpredictability. All right. So unseen therapist says, okay, look, this may well be an echo. Not from what your wife may or may not say. Okay. But from your mother saying, oh, you know, you can't let go of this one. No, you've got to pay a penalty for this. Would that be accurate? Feels right. All right. So unseen therapist says, okay, George, let's take a look here. This is your mother again. This is her view based on her background. And she's trying to advise, you know, oh, don't go there, don't go there. This is so bad, she won't. She's unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen. This was a bad thing that you did, says mother from her perspective about which you have no experience or say so. Are these just words or are they landing? No, they're landing. Okay. All right. So we look at the little unpredictability dark spots, the little, we'll call it the mother dark spots. And un unseen therapists help you look at it and you let it not just turn to white, but you watch it as it sort of fades, sort of moves out of the cloud off into the cosmos and pixelates as somebody else's issue, namely your mother's. Can you do that? that? That's easier. That's much easier to do. Yeah. All right. All right. So then go from cloud to cloud and predictability little piece to predictability little piece. Do whatever you need to do there. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and let me know. Yeah, that was quick. It was like there was a magnet out there. Pulled them all out of the cloud. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, we, uh, well, we will never know how. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes, get into the, you're about to tell your wife and is your hesitancy still a five higher, lower? No, 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 it's lower. I say, I'd say it's, I'd say it's a two or one. Okay. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean you're, now you don't go have to do it and, and all of that. It's still a, I mean, there's still some risk in it. 
Sure. Right. Okay. And you know, there's an element of you got to find the right moment and. Yeah, and maybe lead up to it, and maybe you know, yeah. throw a little bait out once in a while, or see how she responds to something or whatever. Okay. Right. You may want to tiptoe into it and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, it, again, we don't know if this is going to have a, an immediate effect on premature ejaculation. My guess is it's, it's a contributing factor, mm -hmm. but we're aimed at a good start. Okay. Right.